Welcome everyone to the podcast. My name is Muhammad Jama. And I am Ahmed Noor. Uh, this is a weekly podcast where we talk about the latest in our technology world. We are planning every week to go through one domain of our industry, be it software engineering in banking, healthcare, IoT, or cybersecurity, and discuss how it affects us and how can we get into that industry. Welcome to the podcast. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of podcast. Uh, today we are extremely excited to have Brother Duran with us. Uh, Brother Duran is a celebrity in the Somalis, so Somalis in tech and Somalis in software engineering in general. MashaAllah, he did a lot to for our people to help us, you know, uh, grasp the fundamentals of software engineering. And we are very excited to have him with us today to tell us all about his journey and all his initiative that he done. Welcome, Duran Malal. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm not a celebrity, but <laughs> I, I, try, I try to help as much as I can uh, in the internet. I understand like uh, most of the technology uh, things in the internet, uh, if you go to YouTube anywhere, it's written in English and it's, uh, it's recorded in English. So my main goal is, one of my main goals is to uh, introduce technology, programming, coding, uh, general technology to Somali people and Somali youth whatever they are uh, in Somali language. And it, it, it is a challenge, but that's something that I'm, 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 I'm trying to uh, discover right now. It's amazing. It's amazing. And we have Ahmed finally, my, my, my co-host, Ahmed finally decided to join us this episode. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Actually, you know, going off what uh, you just said, uh, whenever I find myself trying to understand like a computer science or, you know, software engineering question, you will find that when you go on YouTube, a lot of the videos are in, um, you know, they're in like Hindi or something, right? Because yep. it's been designed by people, you know, from, you know, there's a big IT, you know, industry yeah. in India. So there, it, there yeah, is... in that sense, I can, yeah, I, I fully agree with you. 100%. There is a huge community of Hindi people in in India. I mean, they took the initiative to uh, to teach people technology, uh, programming in general technology. Uh, and a lot of times it's either in their language or it has an ac a Hindi accent, uh, which is sometimes hard to understand. Sometimes it's okay. Uh, but I, I believe, you know, uh, Somali people can do that too. Mashallah. So, Duran, how did you? How did it come along that you start your your YouTube channel? Like, what was the catalyst? How did you uh, start the channel? You know, the interesting thing is, I actually had YouTube. Uh, my first YouTube channel I started, and when I was introduced to YouTube, I was in high school. And uh, this was, I mean, I don't want to date myself. It was back in <laughs> 2000, uh, 2006. Uh, so, uh, 2006, a friend of mine introduced me to YouTube. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to create an account. But over the years, I didn't put anything in there. And I didn't know anything about technology at that time. I wasn't even interested in technology. Um, so I was putting things like Islamic lectures, Islamic reminders, things like that. Um, and then around 2009 and 10, I moved to San Diego, uh, California from Minnesota. That's where I live right now. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I moved to California and I... Um, I had a lot of time. Uh, I mean, I, I had I didn't have friends. I didn't have anyone. Uh, you know, I moved to a new place, so I had a lot of time at home. I had a computer. Uh, I was I didn't have a lot of responsibility other than just going to college. Uh, so that having that time helped me kind of like learn a lot of things. And also, when I was in high school, I was actually learning technology, but I was I was kind of like using the computer like a normal person like people use it for usual the usual things um mm. so when i moved to california that's when i started getting interested in actually figuring out what the computer is figuring out like how to use youtube uh so uh in california i had a friend of mine uh who was also interested in starting youtube and we kind of started our own youtube but it was mostly just islamic reminders and like just helping the youth uh, kind of like, uh, you know, helping the youth, uh, putting uh, reminders, uh, putting lectures there. And we were doing that. And then when I finished college, I, uh, I, I thought about, I was like, okay, maybe I need to start a new one for a technology because that's what I was interested in. And I was trying to teach my friends about like introducing them to like coding, maybe building websites. Uh, and then while I was doing that I, on the side, I, I said, okay, maybe let me just start a, a web design agency. Um, it, it, it came out of, uh, it came out, uh, that idea came from, it came from the 
fact that I was helping uh, uh, Somali, uh, Somali businesses and, and, this, uh, and the masjids and things like that for websites. So everybody was coming to me for like graphic design work, flyers mm -hmm. and websites. And I was just doing it for free. I was just, you know, just uh, I was going to college, uh, helping the community. So I was one of the, you know, volunteers of, you know, of the masjid, let's say. So, so I was just building these websites, but it wasn't like mostly coding. It was mostly like just putting together a WordPress, yeah. putting together like a Wix website, things like that for them quickly. Uh, so, um, and then after like around like 2015, I started uh, the web design agency. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to take it serious. I'm, I'm just going to make it business and register it and do all that. So wow. that's, that's when I realized, okay, maybe, maybe I need to like, I should teach people coding. And that's when I started uh, the YouTube, but mm -hmm. I didn't start uploading until 2017. So in 2015, that's, uh, I, I get married in 2015. So I kind of get busy in 2015, oh, 2016. Uh, in 2016, I started another business and I moved to Minnesota uh, by that time. I started another business uh, where I was, uh, when I came to Minnesota, um, I was, you know, I was in the community, I was in the masjid community. So there was a masjid I was working at on the weekends. I was teaching uh, uh, Islamic studies and things like that in the weekend and also helping them at the office, uh, you know, just, to, you know, uh, the Masha. money and things like that. So I realized, you know, there is a huge need for like uh, a software for Islamic schools. Uh, there was no organization. There was no attendance that, you know, mm. I don't even know none of the students that were coming to the office. I don't know their names. I don't know the parents. Uh, and I was doing the, uh, the data entry and also they were using Excel, let's say. Of so course. That's when I realized, okay, I need to kind of create a small software for them. And I started creating the software and then I realized the need is bigger. So I made it open to all the, all the Duxies, all the Islamic schools. Uh, so kind of like being in the community and uh, seeing Amazing. the need for technology uh, and, and going from there and starting these businesses, I realized that also there is a need in, in general in the Somali community for technology. And I also went to a bootcamp myself. So at that time, I, I knew some coding, I knew front end de development, I knew how to like put together like a, a PHP website, things like that. I knew a little bit of database, but I didn't have a lot of, you know, hands on uh, knowledge. Uh, so I went to a bootcamp uh, to kind of solidify my education uh, and my uh, the coding part. So I went to bootcamp, I finished the bootcamp. And then I said, Okay, let me just focus on just teaching people. Uh, through YouTube, um, because th I think that is the best way to reach people. And everybody's looking for something. So I started YouTube and I just started uploading like tutorials and, and lessons um, just about coding. Um, yeah. On the side, I was just running the business uh, at the same time and also kind of having kids. I have three kids now. Mashallah. So, so uh, having the kids and things changing, you know, moving to a small city. I live in a small city called St. Cloud. It is very small. It's about an hour away from like uh, Minneapolis, the Twin Cities. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, and, and that's you know where I'm at right now, just uh, uh, running that business, uh, those businesses, the web design and the, uh, and, the, and the software business. And then now I started a new school because it came from the idea of me teaching on YouTube, um, and and we'll talk about that one. So yeah, go ahead. I don't want to. I don't want to keep going. No, no, that, that was that was an amazing introduction. So j just let me just rewind back. So you moved to San Diego, you know, you don't know anybody there, you're all on your own. And what why why did you decide to get into software engineering? Like what what what, what was the thing that attracted you to software engineering? You know, the interesting thing is it actually goes back to my uh, my upbringing. It goes back to when I was in Somalia. I was young. I, I came to the United States when I was around like 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I was young, around like 10 years old, uh, I used to see my, my brother. Uh, may Allah have mercy on him. He passed away uh, uh, around like eight years ago. Uh, he he was a, a technology person and he was the oldest in our family mm. uh he he was a technology when i was young i used to see him like he was the only person in the city we used to live in somalia it was a small city he was the only person who was uh putting together all the technology stuff so he actually bought a a dish from like multisho mm. and he brought to the small city and 
we only had like maybe two quote unquote cinema. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you know, in Somalia, it's not actually yeah. cinema. It's just, it's just a TV on, on a wall. So, um, so he, he was the only person who introduced a dish so that we could watch like Al Jazeera and like the whole yeah. world kind of like adjusting it, putting together like the huge, uh, huge dish so they can use that and people could watch, uh, you know, could watch yeah. the, 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 uh, the other channels. So, the funny thing is that was uh, actually September 11 uh, when the United oh. States uh, the September 11 yeah. we, uh, I was I was in the cinema I was just like it was afternoon and I was just sitting there with other kids who were just having a good time and then a bunch of guys came to the cinema and they were like okay let's just stop all this something is happening in the United States let's let's put on Al Jazeera or something yeah so <laughs> so no. he was he, he was the kind of person that was interested in those kind of stuff and also he started radio and he also installed a um what was it a a, a phone tower or something like that in the city so i used to see him do all that and when i came to united states i you know i i realized what he was doing i didn't know at that time um yeah. so that kind of like helped me get interested in technology and i was uh-huh. always a tinker i used to always like to take things apart uh, the funny thing is i uh, my dad gave me a, a gift way back when i was young he gave me a gift of a i think it was a it was a watch it was a small watch that was yeah. a um a digital watch that uh, you know is a blinking watch that shows you the time and it was just you know it was just very like uh, low quality but it was just for a kid it was it was really good <laughs> Um, it was amazing, huh? It was amazing, yeah. It was for Eid gift, and it, it was, was amazing. And I, I used to just see him like, wow, okay, uh, watch, okay. And then uh, we had, actually, we had a farm in Somalia. So I used to go to the farm, and then I used to take, um, uh, I used to, I create, I, I took like, uh, you know, a, 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 pop, a pipe wire, mm. uh, wires, and I made them like a screwdriver. So yeah. I can take apart the watch and see what's inside it <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, and uh, this is a farm boy like i just you know so i was always interested i don't know i mean maybe it's just in genetics i don't know but i was always interested in technology awesome. and when i went to san diego um i had a month of like not a month a year of 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 just staying at home doing nothing so i went to a, a school that was close to us it was a continued education a school it's mm-hmm. basically a school for adults to continue their education to learn yeah. like um, if, if skills and stuff and they had a free class of like a plus a plus certificate yeah so i went there i went there and i just you know i was the only person who stayed there till the end i actually took the test of a plus certificate there yeah. everybody else just fall off after like yeah. a couple of months <laughs> so you started so, so you started in networking a plus is networking right yeah yeah i started i started from there i started actually from hardware okay. I, i used to i used to fix uh phones and and, and computers right. uh, for people that's what i started from and then quickly i changed it to a software that's 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 where the money at you know and it's a lot more fun you know <laughs> yeah it's a lot more fun because you could you know change things you could tweak things Uh, there's a huge need for it. Um, yeah. I mean, you could like, you could do a lot of things with it, and and it, yeah. and it's something you could see. It's not something in software. It's something you could actually have in your house. And 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 it changes, right? It's 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 pretty cool, man. So so what was like? What was your first like? Uh, you know, development stack that you used? What was it like? I think you 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 dropped some PHP and front end development. Was that like the start of yep. it? So uh, the funny thing is, actually, I started with. Um, I started with front page if you guys remember. Yes, of course. Of course. I remember front, front page, page front page and Dreamweaver. Yes. That was that was <laughs> it, I know it brings back memories to a lot of people. Um front page and uh, and also using FTP and uploading yes. your HTML files and stuff like that. So I started with that um when it comes to development wise uh just HTML and CSS. And then I, I saw a lot of websites where they where you could play around with JavaScript. And JavaScript at that time was not, I'm talking about around like 2007, eight. Yeah. JavaScript was not um, as as good as it is today. I mean, it wasn't everywhere. There was, was no jQuery, the, basically. There was yeah, no jQuery. <laughs> there was no jQuery. There was nothing. So mostly the job of JavaScript was just pop-ups for the website, yes. maybe a, a scrolling text, maybe a, like a... a you know alert or things like that yes. 
So those were kind of things. So I saw a website where you could actually use JavaScript script mm -hmm. uh, and you could build games with it. So there was a game that you could build like tic-tac-toe. Yes. So if you, yeah, if you, if you get the word right, then the person survives. If not, the person dies and things like that. So <laughs> I used to play around with that. And I actually loved it. Uh, I didn't even know that was called JavaScript. That was the weird thing. Yeah. I didn't even know that was called JavaScript. I just knew that this was interesting, better than uh, HTML and CSS. HTML and CSS was great. And I, I learned at that time, you know, uh, building things from scratch using Dreamweaver and, and changing, uh, converting that to, uh, converting actual image to HTML and CSS yes. and putting a website up. But then I, I saw JavaScript and, you know, I was like, oh, that's, this is great. But then it was just for fun. Yeah. And if you want to do anything with uh, information like contact or contact form or any, mm. any data of uh, sending data or receiving data, you have to have a backend language. Yeah. So that's when I started learning like BHP. Um, I mean, BHP is hard. I mean, it, it's, it's the syntax. It's not hard because it is, uh, you know, uh, the language is hard. It's hard yeah. because it's not like, it's not clean uh, syntax and everybody does it differently. And it's like really tough language because you will see like a, uh, a, a you will see a, a PHP code that looks really weird. That looks spaghetti. Angry. They call it spaghetti code. <laughs> spaghetti code. <laughs> and for a beginner, it's, it's hard to like see that and be like, okay, how am I going to learn this? And everybody writes it differently. And it was, it was really yeah. hard. So yeah. I was I was forced to learn because I I was doing uh, BHP I was doing WordPress uh, work mm -hmm. and I was like okay if I'm if I'm changing anything from here I need to learn BHP so my first stack was uh, PHP JavaScript and HTML and CSS that's that that's, like a, that's like an entry you brought back so much memories so Ahmed <laughs> Ahmed and uh, for our listeners the young ones. Um, what Duran is speaking about the front page. So back in the days uh, to create a web page, you, you had to layer everything in tables. There wasn't like CSS and float and all that. You had to use a table to, yep. to layer all your homepage. And what we used to do is you get like, you design the page on, um, on, on image ready or Photoshop, now it's like image ready Photoshop. And then you take that image and then you slice it up to a table like into cubes. And then you create yeah. a table and that's what Dreamweaver and Frontpage used to do for you. You know, they used to take that image and then slice it up and create the tables inside the table, yeah. inside the table, inside the table. It, it was yeah. crazy days, man. Oh, you brought back so much <laughs> memories, Dora. Yeah, yeah. I, those, those were the days, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, how do you say it? Oh, yeah, no. Um, I remember seeing this. Uh, because I think a few years ago, I was learning about HTML and CSS and it was explaining this and it's like, you're not supposed to put things in tables. I was like, why would you put things in tables? And then I realized that is, that must have been what was happening before that. Uh, so this, this was, this is a good uh, sort of history lesson. <laughs> yeah, def definitely, definitely. It was, it was really interesting times uh, because you, you don't think about responsive. You only think about, okay, is the image loading yes. as, as quick as possible? And uh, when you do in Photoshop and like in Photoshop, it has a, a, a place where you could actually import the images for a web. And when, uh, I mean, exporting, I mean, when you export in the image, you could export it as a, for the web and you yeah. can slice it in Photoshop. There's a slicing uh, tool. You could slice it. And all you think about is just how big the images are. If they're yeah. like, if they're less than, if they're less than, let's say uh, 20, uh, uh, not megabyte, uh, what was it? 20, 20 kilobyte, I think yeah. it's the uh, if it's less than that or 50 kilobyte, then you're fine. Uh, yes. You know, th oh, that's all you have to worry about. That's that's as responsive as it gets. <laughs> <those days. laughs> and, and 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 you remind me as well with the sprite. We used to have a sprite. So Ahmed, you get one image, you put all your images inside that one image, and then you use CSS background to to just show parts of the image. Uh, they used to call it sprites. Remember the yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that too. It was interesting days. I, I even remember people who used to do websites by just getting a whole image onto the website and using, uh, I think it was called the map. You yes. just map map the image to links. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, thinking about it right now uh, with the responsive world we live in and the mobile, mm -hmm. that is like crazy because you have a whole, the whole, the whole website is just in one image. Yes, and, yes. And... <laughs> Those are funny days. Um, no, and, and, yeah, yep. So definitely we could go back in history, but it was really <laughs> no, cool. no. Yeah, so it was it was fun because you you learn um 
you learn things from like the ground up. You 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 th- you know. Right now, you you appreciate how responsive things are, like having a bootstrap and having things being responsive and not worrying about the images. It's a lot of fun right now. But yeah. back in the days, if you know, you're doing that. I think the main reason was you know people just use the computers those days, no mobile. And if you're using mobile, it was just the websites were actually slow and like you you don't there's no response if you don't um, you know you, you don't have a website that is dedicated to to mobile uh, because yeah. 2007 is when iPhone came out came out and iPhone changed everything basically I think iPhone kind of like said uh, we do not want websites to look like exactly how they look like in desktop to look yes. like in the mobile and. Uh, people realize, okay, so if you want to actually see something on the website from your mobile, you have to pinch and zoom. And yeah. like, you have to kind of like drag around things and see things like that. And that was not, it doesn't look good. It's not user friendly. Uh, so, um, but yeah, back in the days, uh, and I started with like, you know, things like GeoCities, if you guys remember. Yes. It was, uh, <laughs> it, was uh, it was a Yahoo, uh, it was a Yahoo thing. Um, yeah. Yahoo had a, uh, service where you could create your own website and you just put something like let's say maybe like durant.yahoo.com something like that durant.geocities.yahoo.com um so i started with that too and also i started with myspace yeah myspace helped me a lot because i was actually the person my friends come to me to build the html for the myspace to kind of look nice uh, so I think that's what interested me in HTML when I, uh, when I was using MySpace. Oh yeah. man, that's 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 quite a history lesson, man. You brought back so much memories. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> so tell us, uh, is there like uh, now you get in like looking at the future now? Like, are you getting into a lot more uh, into backend uh, development, or or are you still are you still staying true to front end a little bit of PHP? Um, really, I'm 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 moving away from PHP. I mean, I I realize PHP is a great language. I mean, it is it is actually very easy and easy in like if you want to just uh, put something together quickly and you want to have a website up, mm-hmm. it's easy that way. But for a complex application, I think it's uh, you, you have to use something a little more organized, a little more uh, robust. Uh, I yeah. think using things like Node or using things like Python. Even Python, I would say it's really slow, and I, I don't think for like a bigger application, Python will be uh, will be cumbersome unless you're using something like uh, uh, using something like Django. Uh, but I would say Node Node.js is really fast; it's really amazing. So um, I'm I'm moving into more of like the JavaScript world, I would say. Um, yeah. And and the reason for mainly the reason for that is because it's very versatile; it's very easy. And I wouldn't say JavaScript is a great language, but uh, it's, I mean, it's much, syntax-wise, it's much better than PHP, let's put it that way. Uh, But it is, also has its own issues, especially when you get into like object-oriented programming. Mm -hmm. Uh, JavaScript is the most confusing when it comes to object-oriented because it's not actually, it doesn't have classes. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, it has uh, the fake classes, right? The fake classes. Yeah, it, People think JavaScript has actual classes, but it doesn't. It has prototype, yeah. uh, and and underneath it is a prototype. So you have to learn the actual prototype. And I'm teaching right now. I actually teach recently. I teach prototype and prototype inheritance and classes, and it was really pain to explain the prototype inheritance and then changing things from a prototype inheritance uh, and prototype functions, uh, and they call it. Um, constructor functions yep. uh, uh, to actual class. And when the students saw the class, they were like, why didn't you taught us this before? <laughs> <laughs> and and you, know, uh, you, know, you know what the amazing thing is? You, yeah. you, teach, you teach that stuff in Somali. I was, I, was, I was actually gobsmacked when I saw you explaining <laughs> inheritance in Somali. Uh, that was, that's, I, was uh, yeah. I, did, I was lost for words, wallahi. Like it's such a technical, it's a very, very technical thing. And it's very like, it's not even like normal uh, programming. It's like a proper computer science, uh, you know, yeah. inheritance you're explaining and polyphonism in Af Somali. How, how did that come along? Like how did you make up <laughs> words? Because I'm pretty sure those words do not exist in Somali. <laughs> I know they are not. There's no, uh, in technology, like even in science and math, there are some words in Somali because uh, back in the days uh, when, uh, you know, the Somali government, they started teaching science and so on and math. 
And, mm. you know, professors at that time, they did uh, kind of uh, did really good in creating the language for like science and math. But technology actually started after the Somali, uh, you know, yeah. had the civil war. So, <laughs> so it's like there is no background on like the words for Somali in technology. So t- there was no technology at that time other than just basic things like cars and, yes. and machines and things like that. There was no the technology we have today. So the only thing I could can do is just explain things in, in, in sentences. So if I say things like inheritance, I have to say inheritance in uh in somali it's called the hal uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh the hal as i'm like thinking of like uh you know inheriting from your father let's say if you inherit from your father um then that's the hal but in programming <laughs> a function is the father or an object is the father or the class let's say yeah. the class is the uh, there is a father class yeah. and then the uh, you have to create something uh, in instantiation and uh and and you have to uh inherit that class uh to uh, and create a new class and use something like extend to yeah. inherit and 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 then you're the son it's really hard to explain i know <laughs> <laughs> i saw you i saw you so so um so ahmed duran also duran is quite modest uh, so i'm gonna i'm gonna expose him today duran <laughs> actually have a, a discord channel a very very popular discord channel that everybody joins from all around the world uh, and most mostly actually from Somalia where he yeah. where he in that channel people ask questions about software engineering all pure all in Somali and he explains everything to the inch perfect in Somali like and he, like, I think on Saturdays you do like a live session as well Duran, if I yeah remember. yeah on Saturdays I do live session answering questions and things like that uh, because I realize a lot of times people don't have understanding of like small concepts. Even some people don't understand what programming is. And yeah. a lot of students actually ask me, what is the difference between programming and coding? What is the yeah. difference between programming and even computer? You know, like it's you have to kind of like go all the way down to uh, what is actually a technology. You know, what is yeah. um, there was a lot of people that were asking me the difference between IT and ICT, the IT and uh, yeah. Uh, and computer science so those concepts general co- concept you have to explain and you have to go deep and uh, explain simple concepts things like what is a software engineer what is the difference between software engineer and software developer you know they're yeah. very similar but you have to kind of sh- tell them like a small difference um and i usually yeah. tell them like it's all about the skill and what do you learn it's not yeah. about like the title you know you could be software engineer and software developer you can name it whatever you want yourself yeah. but at the end of the day, it comes down to, do you know how to like actually write code and build yeah. applications and things like that? So how do you say programming in Somali? Uh, I don't think there is a word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so usually I just say, um, uh, you know, when I'm explaining the difference between hardware and software, I yeah. tell them uh, hardware, uh, it's called, uh, hardware is what I'm talking about. So uh, com- your computer, your keyboard is a hardware, your yes. mouse is a hardware. So, and then I software on the software is, is things like Microsoft Word. If you ever use the Microsoft Word, ah. I, I say Microsoft Word is a soft, because a lot of people use Microsoft Word. It's yes. a software, you can't actually touch it, but you could actually use it. So that is a software, the difference. That's wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so how do you find, let's say the take up of the, um, of IT, let's say back home, like are people, do you find that a lot of people are sort of quite excited to learn and get into it? Or uh, generally, what do you, what do you find? I, I, I see, I see a huge, um, a huge interest in technology right now. Uh, and, and I think it's because of the internet, social media, everybody's connected and people see the need for it. They see every day, like they see uh, Bill Gates, they see uh, uh, Zuckerberg, they see, you know, these people, rich people, uh, who are uh, the heads of technology companies and they kind of like maybe inspire to maybe one day become like the person who runs a, a technology uh, company in Somalia. Um, and I think because Somalia has a lot of uh, youth uh, and I, I would say Somalia and Somaliland, they have a lot of youth right now. And, and the reason for that, I think it's just, you know, um, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of schools and the main reason is because, you know, uh, Somali has, uh, I mean, I don't know the reason actually, but I know that there is a lot, there's studies actually done 
uh, that about 70% of Somalia is under 30. Uh, people in Lib Somalia is 70% under 30. I think I read that a while back. Uh, so, and there there are no jobs in Somalia. You know, mm. I mean, the jobs that are the, the jobs that we have in Somalia are not mostly technology. And if you find a technology job, it's very rare to find one. Uh, so. Um, it, there is a struggle, actually, there is a huge struggle between and there is a disconnect between the uh, students graduating from uh, universities and colleges that teach technology. And when the student graduates, graduates, they actually ask me, they tell me, like, I know how to code, I know how to program, where can I find a job? And they ask me, is there a, is there a, a way we can find a job online? And I tell them there are platforms that you could actually find the jobs and apply or become a freelancer. But yeah. the problem is in uh, most, a lot of parts in Somalia, there is no way for them to actually get money through the internet. They cannot have a credit card or debit card uh, because yeah. there is no system for that. So there's so there's a huge challenges uh, when it comes to that. Um, but I'm hoping that's going to be solved uh, soon uh, sure, because yeah. the, the problem is too huge for it to just exist forever. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is a, a huge need and I'm trying to, I'm trying to do just my part, which is teaching, but actually there's nothing I can do about the credit card part. <laughs> I'm trying to find the solutions right now. Uh, there is a, actually a company that I was, I was, uh, talking to recently and they have an API for, uh, Somalia, um, uh, telecom companies. Uh, I think it's a Hormud and another one, uh, where the API, you could create an app where people can uh, can pay online with their phone, with their phone, oh, no credit nice. card. Yeah. Nice. Oh, Somalia, that's pretty cool. They, yeah, Somalia, they use a phone to uh, to yes. pay things. So if you create an API that, um, uh, you know, uh, transfers money from one account to another account without credit card, then that is, uh, that's a huge thing. It's yeah. a big win. Yeah. What do you think, let's say, the impact of, you know, the pandemic right now where people are appreciating working from home and, you know, with jobs uh, up until now, even though the IT sector is generally way more flexible in these things, um, quite often with jobs, they're like, oh, we want someone who's local, etc. Whereas now people are getting used to working remotely, working from home. Do you think that will affect this quite a bit in that? you know, people would be even happier to go and hire so that, you know, someone from overseas. Um, and do you think that will specifically have an impact on Somalia? Obviously, barring the payment issues and other logistical yeah. things. Yeah. I I think Somalia has, has a long way to go. And I think mostly you have to become a hub. First, you have to start introducing yourself. Like, let's say those countries uh, like India and Pakistan and, and Indonesia, those countries, you have to show that you are actually a, a, a place where uh, people can find a, a, a people that work for them uh, and, and for a low price and high quality work. Uh, so it, it's going to take a while for them to, uh, for the world to kind of notice or for a lot of people to notice that there is a, there are people who can work for you in Somalia. I actually hire people online all the time. I hire from Fiverr, from uh, Upwork. I hire people to do some certain works for me, but I also hire from Somalia because I know, uh, I, I hire them because of, from my connections of the youth, uh, I tell them just do this work for me and I will give you this money. And I have to send the money through Hawalat yeah, uh, because I, I can't send. And the Hawalat one is also dangerous because uh, if you send it to someone and you don't know who they are, they could be in uh, in a watch list or something like that. So if you don't, if you, don't, if you send it to someone who, who, you don't, who you don't know, then it becomes, it could be a problem for you. So that's also dangerous. Uh, um, but I think it, uh, I think the, the, the trajectory for, for the Somali is, is really good. Uh, you know, other than just uh, things that are happening right now uh, with uh, droughts and things like that Yeah. for the youth, I think they just looking for opportunity. And I think if somebody creates opportunity for them where they can actually work and they come to work and they get paid but very minimum, like maybe, maybe like, uh, thirty dollars a month or something like that. They will be happy to work. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so there we're just waiting for one person, one company, or group of people to to take that initiative and and create that bridge between the world and Somalia. That's and, all. Yeah, I was thinking that. 
like an agency, for example, that hires, you know, that, that gets the jobs because they, they do actually have this, as you mentioned, in, in other hubs, you know, they'll be like, hey, hire a developer for the day. You know, you get the first day for free and things like that. Right. And then they try. You basically hire in someone that's somewhere in some part of the world, um, such an agency, for example. Uh, you know, where you get the jobs and the, the company gets the jobs and then it passes it on to its employees, you know, let's say in Somalia yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what we're looking for. I mean, it is, uh, you have to be in the country first uh, and then you have to create the agency and then you have to be legit agency and you have to present yourself in a, in a way that you actually uh, bring a quality work. Uh, you have to get your, you know, your foot in the, in the world, either Europe or U S uh, America, uh, you have to get your foot in and, and have projects and things like that. And uh, and then after that, I mean, you have to invest first. You have to invest some money in it uh, first and then have people come to your uh, company. And also, you have to kind of train the people because even if the students finish the university, they need to know certain skills. They need to know like front-end development. They need to know like uh, back-end development. Maybe you could hire someone for like just a, a database work or a yes. couple of people for database work and they are experts in databases. Uh, so it's hard to find like expert uh, because a lot of times when the student finishes school, there is no, there is no, there's nothing that helps them practice what they learned. And, uh, and a lot of times some schools, they don't teach well. So that's also reality. They don't teach quality work, quality, I mean, education. They teach the general concept. They teach you a couple of uh, coding uh, things in Java, maybe C++. And then that's it. So I actually had uh, someone contacting me from like uh, Kenya and he said uh, he used to live in Somalia and he went to university for IT and, and computer science. And when he finished, he didn't know how to do any coding. He understood some concepts, but that was it. And he spent a lot of money on it. And yeah. then he came to Kenya and he got a training and he realized that was actually the first time he actually touched to like HTML and CSS yeah. when it comes to web development. So he said, I never, le- I never learned anything about web in, in college. Nobody told me anything about it. I used to think you build a website with like C++ um, and that's all you need to know. So yeah. I said, there is a lot more to it. Uh, and he was, he was upset about it because he said like they took a lot of money from uh, the university took a lot of money from him. But, uh, but it is, there is disconnection. Uh, you know, there is a lot of problems, but at the end of the day, um, you just have to keep teaching. You just have to give the person skills and then eventually they'll find a way to use it. That's, you know, I think that's, that's, at the end of the day, that's comes down to. And this, uh, and I have to say, this is one of the reasons. So uh, for everybody to know, like the, this podcast is, is part of the Somali Computing Society and, and the, one of the reasons that we, we exist is to help with issues like that. So at the moment, we have a lot of initiatives back at home. We're starting to work with some of the universities and education to be able to, you know, give them advice on their syllabus, tell them, you know, the new stuff that they should teach their students. And on our platform, I mean, Duran, you made a really excellent, excellent point there, which you know, when, the, when, when they finish studying, they don't know what to do, what's the next step. And that's why we created the, the Computing Society. So if anybody listening here and wants to know more, they should go to computing.so. On that platform, you'll be able to see, we have a lot of tutorials. We have Durant's tutorials on there as well. We have a lot of tutorials from a lot of brothers. We have a lot of uh, members from all around the world that could help, mentor. And uh, that, that, that's, that's why we exist, by the way. <laughs> Mashallah, Mashallah. that's amazing Allah. that's amazing we we need that that's one of the things we need we need a group of people that come together to have a, to take initiative and work together uh mm-hmm. it's hard to work as one person i i tried my best but it was you know one person it's it's really hard oh. and i have i have a group of people now helping me uh but um you know one person it, it's going to be difficult so and also we have to work in different spaces so uh i let's say i work in the teaching space you guys work in the teaching space plus you also work in, in the connection and building the bridges uh, space so having those you know uh, people work in different places is always important and absolutely it's needed 
Yeah, uh, our aim is actually to 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 address that problem of your friend that finished studying in Somalia and moved to Kenya, which is raising the IT standards or in, in general the IT standards in Somalia. So they wouldn't need to go to Kenya. So they were helping them to understand uh, what's needed right now in the industry. They don't need to. Uh, and by the way, there, there's nothing wrong with learning C++, by the way. Uh, I, 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 exactly, exactly. There's nothing wrong with it. 100%. I love C++ actually. It's it's it is the core of all the languages. Yes. But it it is you, you, I mean, he was asking me about the web and I I told him like yeah. uh, you can't just, you know, you have to have HTML, CSS and some JavaScript at, to but, start with. So but, and uh, we were just talking about the web. Yeah. So. But if you want to build something else and a software, C++ is enough for everything. Yeah. So so that's that's one of the misconceptions that people at the moment like, you know, programming become become like just another world for the web like the programming is just for the web if you say to anybody i'm software engineer they only think about you know websites and and you know that's what i try to explain you know when i get people asking me for advice and to get into programming it's it's one of the hard things is is to tell them it's not just about making a website you know there's there's a lot more to programming making a website is just the tip of the iceberg right there's yes, you need yes. to learn all the data structures you need to learn how how the actual you know when you write a loop how does that actually work you know so so yeah it's if you so, learn if you learn the fundamentals you don't even need the web you could do yes. you could work with uh, machines you could work with yes. uh, robots you could work with um, data structures and uh, uh, i mean a, a data science uh, field you could work in there yeah. you could work in so many things automation um yeah. so many it's things just so web, yeah web is only one part of it and there's a mobile there is security there is yeah. uh networking yeah. there's a lot yeah yeah so that's why that's why like most of the time you know uh, I, I, I and i saw this i saw this huge argument on twitter where where people were talking about a lot of somalis and non-somalis they were talking about do you need computer science degree to become a programmer and, and normally the answer is, it depends on what you want to do and, and where yeah. you want to reach, right? Yep, yep, definitely. So, yeah, that, that debate actually, you know, it's everybody's talking about it right now because of mm -hmm. the rise of like boot camps and self-learning and YouTube. Yeah. Uh, people are questioning, do they need a degree to actually become a software engineer? Uh, and it, it really depends on the person and what are you looking for? Yes. Uh, if you're looking for a job, I mean, most companies, 90, 95% of companies, they require a degree. And uh, they, I mean, they might, uh, uh, I mean, if they see your skills, they might say, okay, it's fine if he doesn't have degrees. But you just, you know, it's just one more thing to, uh, you know, take off from your list of, of problems. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not looking for a job and you just want to uh, do your own things, um, a lot of times, you know, people say that you don't need a degree. So, I mean, it really depends. I would say at the end of the day, degree is good. If you can get it, uh, it's good because it is a, a backup plan for always. Uh, yes. You could use it. And the degree teaches you stuff that the bootcamp doesn't teach you. Like the bootcamp doesn't go through, you know, uh, you know, encoding types, you know, binary trees and all that stuff. The bootcamp doesn't teach you all that stuff, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, really, it actually depends on the bootcamp. Uh, the bootcamp I went to, they taught us uh, algorithm and data structure, but mm -hmm. it really depends on like the bootcamp. A lot of bootcamps, especially the one I, I started actually recently, uh, I, we're not teaching uh, we're not teaching algorithm data structure because we're it's a sixteen week uh, program. Yeah, it's not enough and, time. Yeah, there's not enough time to teach everything yeah. about let's say web development and then uh, full stack development and then also teach data structure and algorithm. You have to have at least a minimum of like maybe like thirty five weeks or yes. or forty weeks. To teach, uh, to teach the first part of it, or start with algorithm and data structure, and then go into uh, front, uh, full stack, or start with full stack and go to uh, data, data structures and algorithms. Yeah. So it is, you know, a lot of times bootcamps they don't uh, put emphasis on it, but then you realize at the end of it, when you're looking for a job, every job requires you to know algorithm and data structure. So yes. <laughs> that's when you realize you need it. Yes, you need, you're gonna reach a stage. You know, you could you could have a very successful career as a as a as a as a, as a programmer, coder, building website without data structure and algorithm. But but if you want to take the next step, if you want to work, for example, for Google or any of those companies, they will they will quiz you about algorithm and data structures, right? Yeah, yeah, they will, they will. That's that's their their thing. I mean, 
you see small companies in small cities that are asking algorithm data structure and they never use algorithm data oh, structure. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> I mean, the reason why they're asking is in case it comes up, you know this, or yeah. they're asking you because they want to see that you actually, if you know data structure algorithm, that means you actually know the fundamentals. Yes. And you don't, you don't worry about like, let's say you don't worry about like what, uh, mostly like some of the web develop, uh, web development concepts, yeah. because if you know data search algorithms, you, you better know, uh, uh object oriented, you better know yes. functions, how to write functions. You have to know at least the language you you're using. You have to know all the concepts of it. You have to know the if for loop, yeah. uh, you have to know, uh, an OOP, you have to know functional program. Yeah. You have to know. So all these concepts, you could just take them, um, build applications with them or build a mobile app with them. So yeah. I would say if somebody learns, let, let's say one language, you could actually transition to different languages easily. Yes. So that's one thing like uh, it's, it's so actually, you know what, that brings us nicely to your school and your and your program and your modules that you're doing. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So uh, I recently started a school called Gibby School. And it, what's the URL? It says, so people would know what's the URL? The URL is gibbyschool.com. Right? Okay. It's, it's a G-A-B-I -G uh, school.com. Um, so th the main reason why I started this was I actually finished the bootcamp myself. And I realized I, I, I was doing the YouTube things. I was teaching people, uh, mentoring people. And I realized there is a big disconnect between people who just watch uh, uh, tutorials and try to learn themselves and people who actually have mentors and people who push them and, and, and take them to the next level. So I realized, you know, tutorials are great, but then at the end of the day, tutorials are, I would say, supplemental uh, mm -hmm. uh, resource. They're not, they're not primary resource. So they're supplemental. So let's say if you're, if you're in college and, and, and you learn in, let's say algorithm class, then you go to YouTube, you go to different places to watch uh, those concepts but you're not using those as like your primary source. Yeah. Uh, you're using your primary source as like the textbook or you're using it for like a course. So I realized, you know, uh, we need a place uh, for people who are serious, who wants to pay for it to go to. And the people were asking me for like many years. They were asking me for the last like three years to start a school to, uh, for, you know, for them to learn uh, programming. So, um, so I started for that reason, and it is it teaches full stack web development, mm -hmm. and it has uh, it has different uh, different uh, uh, I would say different sections. Uh, it has a full time, it has a part time, mm. and, and soon we'll be adding a a self based one where you could uh, you know just watch the lectures and and then uh, pace yourself. So, wow. uh, it, yeah, it is it teaches full stack. It teaches uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, Node.js, and then we add Python at the end. So the last uh, couple of weeks is Python. Um, so it's it's basically, you know, uh, full Why did stack. you go with Node.js out of curiosity? Um, I think Node.js, I went to Node.js because I'm teaching them for a whole, about two months, I'm teaching them JavaScript. So we're, we're uh -huh. learning, first month we're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then the uh, next month we're learning React. And then to transition that from, from that, to something like, let's say, maybe like uh, just Python only on the back end. And mm -hmm. if you want to use Python on the back end, you know, you, you can't use uh, Django. You, I mean, you could use Django, but you have to learn the core concepts of like, yeah. uh, you know, in the language when it comes to connecting to the database, yeah. creating all that, creating the APIs, things like that. You could use Fl uh, Flask, Flask. And, yeah, and different, uh, different frameworks. But that's, you know, uh, the disconnect is that Node.js, you already know the language. So if you if you you already know it's a JavaScript, the only easy thing you transition. need to learn, yeah, it's very easy transition. The only thing you need to learn is okay. So you learn the React here in Node.js. Instead of saying import, you say require. That's that's all you have to say, mm -hmm. and you use the same thing. You use the same uh, packages. So mm -hmm. uh, you already learned npm and and you know getting uh, packages from npm. Yeah. Uh, you use the same thing in a Node.js. You just get a package for like, let's yeah. say, uh, encrypting your password, and mm -hmm. let's say one for like uh, connecting to the database or creating a schema. Yeah. Um, so it is. Uh, it's easier transition, and and I think you know, it is easier way to build websites or applications. Is you know, and most of the, most of the services these days just accept Node.js. Um, so, um, it, I mean, that, 
I mean, that was the only reason, just for the easy transition. No, no, I, but, I, I, I have nothing against Node.js. I, I, I yeah. it just, it's just interesting because normally, like, they, they would go with the LAMP stack, right? They will go, they will yeah. go into the PHP directly and they will skip the Node.js and the Python, you know? But you're right, yeah. nowadays, it's good to, to understand the Python and to be able to do some work on it. And Node.js, of course, it's... Uh, yeah. It's, it's cool. I mean, Node.js comes with its own web server as well. You have Express and all that stuff. So it's, yep. it's, it's fully, it's fully, 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 how, the, how can I say it? It's fully managed by itself. You know, it gives you everything from scratch, right? Yeah, it gives you everything from scratch. It is, uh, it also has, you know, all these packages that you could use for different things. There are a lot of, uh, you know, things that you could connect to. Uh, there yeah. is a new thing called a GraphQL that you could use. Yeah. To, to 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 create your own uh, to manage your own uh, restful apis not the restful yeah. api to manage your apis yeah. and uh, and also there is things like uh, what is it called um sqlize which is a uh, which is a way to build a schema and and manage your your instead of you, <laughs> layer, right? RM, yeah. instead, yeah. instead of uh, a lot of people are avoiding i don't know why people are avoiding sql um I mean, SQL is, I like SQL. I mean, it's not even the hardest thing ever uh, when it comes to syntax. <laughs> uh, yeah. When it comes to syntax, it's not hard, but it is, it's a little bit different. That's, that's all. Um, I think, I think the generation, because the generation, they got into it during the NoSQL and the document-based kind of uh, databases. So for them to go back to SQL or Oracle or, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's hard for them. It's hard. I there understand. is there, there is a whole framework built to avoid SQL. I just, sometimes <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> so uh, would you say then, let's say someone wants to get into web development, for example, um, mostly just because I understand it a little bit better than, you know, the other uh, parts of uh, CS. Uh, would you recommend, let's say, learning front end first or learning front end and back end or maybe specializing in one or the other or both? Uh, I would say start with the front end, uh, especially because of the frameworks that exist today. Um, um, I mean, uh, I would say, I mean, I always recommend React, but there's also Angular and there is a view for the front end. And there, is, there are many of them. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to understand like, what the user is actually viewing, what they seeing. And if you go to any website today, go to uh, any of the big companies today, Microsoft, uh, go to any Apple, go to any of them, they're using React on their front end. Uh, somehow, some way, they're using somewhere in their website React. Uh, a lot of them, Google is using Angular everywhere. So, uh, and, and the reason for that, it just makes your job, your, your, your life much easier. And it makes the user's experience much, much better. Uh, so I would say front end is, is great. Uh, I would say start with front end and then learn API on how to, you know, how to uh, connect to the back end. Um, learn API, I would say RESTful API is fine. Um, you know, we might have Graph, GraphQL soon. Um, in the next like maybe five, maybe six years, we might start using GraphQL, which is a little bit different than, not a little bit different, it's completely different than RESTful API. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I'm actually kind of like playing around with GraphQL right now. Uh, so, uh, so once you learn API, then uh, go to the backend, whatever language that you like, I'll say any language is fine. PHP, uh, uh, Python, uh, I'll say uh, C, uh, C Sharp is fine. Any of the languages, Java is fine. Any language you feel comfortable in the backend, use that uh, for the backend. If you don't have a background in another language uh, and you learn JavaScript, try Node.js if you already know JavaScript and see if that helps you. Uh, if not, then use similar languages like Python or even, uh, even Ruby is fine too. A lot of people like Ruby because it's uh, easy syntax. Um, so, I mean, the back end, you have a lot of options. On the front end, you have to learn JavaScript and its frameworks and, and HTML and CSS. Oh, okay. Oh, and uh, would you say as well, so would, would you recommend web development as sort of the, the route into, let's say, if someone was interested in learning, uh, or would you say there are other options as a starter? Or would you recommend web development as sort of uh, not an easy, but maybe the easier option of getting into sort of programming? 
I think the reason mostly why people go to web development or mobile development is because they actually see what they're doing. So especially if you are just a, a person who's getting into programming and when you write something, you don't see anything, anything visual and you have to deal with the terminal all the time. And uh, especially if you're doing something like, let's say, networking. Uh, networking, a lot of times, it's the only visual I think you see. And I don't know a lot about networking. It's just the graphs and the, and, and in, you know, the diagrams. Other than that, you have to deal with the terminal a lot of times, especially Linux. You have to use Linux to deal with that. If you're dealing with security, let's say cybersecurity and things like that, you always have to use Linux. Uh, and also have to use, you have to use the terminal all the time. So if you, if you, if you feel comfortable with the terminal, and you could like become like actual hacker, <laughs> look like a hacker, and uh, and it just type on the terminal, edit on the terminal, do everything in the terminal, then that's fine. You could uh, go to that route. But most of the time, people like to see something visual. A lot of times, just like they like to see things that are they things they built already, and and they could uh, present to their friends. You know, people like to brag. You cannot brag about like. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of brag about a terminal uh, thing that you actually hacked and uh, and you ter- you kind of infiltrated a network of like let's say a tester network you infiltrated and you're you know you're brought about that because you actually did the hacking uh, you just kind of kind of brag about that you have to explain it and you have to like yeah. you know you can't post post it on social media easily <laughs> but if you build if you build a website or if you build a app a mobile app then you can just show it and say okay here's what I built guys you know the code is here, but actually visual is here. So I think mainly that's what, why people go to it. And now it's also paying a lot. I mean, security and network and those things, they pay way more, uh, a lot of times way more than web, uh, web development. But it also, web development also pays really good. So it's, you know. It's very hard to, to break into it, especially nowadays, like the market is, is completely saturated with, with talent and people doing it, you know. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't try, but yeah. there's always, you know, extra stuff. Like programming is not just in the web development. Like Duran said, you could do it in the networking part, but you could always do it. You could you could do it in the data science part. You could do it on the IoT part. You know, you could do it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, you know, like if yeah. you use, like we were talking about C++ area, uh, earlier. So all of you, all of your IOTs is actually built using C plus plus or some kind of version of it, yeah. right? Definitely, definitely. I mean, those uh, low level languages, C and C plus plus, they are everywhere. But um, it's only for like people who actually know how to like actually do programming mm-hmm. um, uh, from from the ground up, like managing uh, managing uh, data, managing space, managing yes. uh, storage. Uh, you have to do all those things manually, and it's great. Like once you get into that. And if you like doing, if you if you have if you like having control of everything, then it's great. Uh, and you have to master the language. You have to know everything about it. Um, a lot of times, especially if you're building a complex systems uh, of motherboards and, and circuits. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think there uh, there are a lot of options. It's just it depends on what do you like doing. Do you like you know do you like doing the terminal and dealing with you know uh, all that, or do you like visual or you know it depends on a lot of people like uh, the coding part. Some people like the visual part of front end. And also they like to do back end because, you know, it makes them more uh, market, uh, yeah. uh, more valuable in the market. Yeah. I mean, uh, Ahmed, just to add to that, there is like, if you look at programming languages, they split into two. You either have a, you have a compiled or interpreted, right? So I, I, I fully recommend like a compiled, like a compiled language is like your C, Java, stuff that you have to compile that doesn't run directly. Interpreted languages, you know, like all your PHP or Python and all that stuff. I think it's essential to learn at least one compiled language. I think that's as a fundamentals because all your interpreted languages actually use compiled languages to, to, to interact with the machine, right? So your Python yeah. is actually interpreted into C and that's how it, interact with the machine right yeah yeah so i uh, yeah i always recommend to at, at least see uh use some uh you know learn something like java or c plus yeah, plus yeah. at least learn the fundamentals learn how they work uh how to how to work with types and uh, uh static types and how to work all to all that uh, instead of like if you learn javascript and like i'm, I'm teaching people javascript now and mm-hmm. they have you know all the all the data uh, data types uh, the primitive mm-hmm. data types uh, you know, they just took for granted. You just say let or var, and you just uh, uh, said it. But later on, they come to me with error. I'm like, okay, so they created something like maybe for loop, and then they put an if statement inside, and then they said, 
uh, they set a uh, something equal to something, uh, uh, maybe uh, two numbers equal to each other, and then they use the triple equal in JavaScript, and uh -huh. the triple equal checks the type and also the value, and yes. then the two things are not same. One is a string, one is uh, maybe is a number. And, and I tell them, mm, I mean, that's a JavaScript uh, thing. Like if you were using something like Java or C++ or C, you have to declare the actual type of, yes. of, the, of the variable. And then yeah, you, that's, yeah, you already yeah. know what you get it into. So uh, instead of guessing basically yeah. the variables. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that because I was, when we were doing the uh, algorithm and data structures, um, I'm, I'm used to things like JavaScript or PHP where you can just say this is that, like, you know, this is that variable or whatever. And now you have to say it's an integer, it's a float, or it's this. And I was like, oh, God, why? Every single time. <laughs> because... And also in Python, in Python, you don't even have to have a key. You could just say a word equal to something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you know what, you know, I, I never actually was interested in Python until lately, like everybody else. And I love pandas, uh, Duran. I love pandas, man. It's, it's, it's yeah. the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Python is interesting. I mean, it is, uh, it came from a, I was actually listening to the guy who created JavaScript uh, a few days ago, uh, an interview he made. And he was saying like uh, in 1995, there were like two families. There were like the uh, a family where, you know, where Python came from and the family of C. You know, C is definitely the, like the oldest language, not the oldest language. There, there is other language assembly and other languages that are older than it. But um, C was the, the godfather. Yeah, C is the language that survived through, you know, I mean, assembly, people use assembly today, but like, I mean, it's not like, it's not like C. So yeah. C, uh, and also they wrote books about C. That's why I think it became the most popular. Uh, yeah. They wrote, uh, I think in 1960s, 1970s, they wrote books about it. And then yeah. in 1980s and 1990s, when uh, you know the technology started, everybody read the books and they just, okay, uh, I'm either going to create a language or I'm just going to base everything on the C syntax. So there were two different syntax. There were the uh, Python family syntax, which I think came from, uh, he said something, I don't remember. It came from another language. Uh, I, I actually the ABC, never mind the ABC language. So back in the days, uh, in uh, I think 1970s, there were uh, in in Europe, uh, you know, like where we, where you guys have the CERN uh, in in France. I think the CERN it's yeah. a it's a, a it's a lab, uh, it's yeah. a it's a physics lab. So CERN, uh, there were a lot of scientists working in CERN, and that's when they you know uh, they were doing their you know uh, sci scientific stuff. So someone created a, a, a language called ABC, which was uh, the most simple language. It's just English words, the whole language. Uh, so you just say if, um, if something is equal and the equal itself is actual word and you, you, know, you just use a normal language to yeah. create a programming language. So someone created that and the guy who created Python, he, uh, he, he read books about, about ABC and uh, and actually he lived he lived yeah he lived in 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 europe right he uh, python actually python i was actually doing uh, research on python he um the guy who created python he um he watched a show called uh i think it was in in ab in, in bbc uh in mm. uk it's called the python and something circuits circuits python something like that no no monty and, python monty python. monty python yeah yes. so yeah he pasted the, the name of the language from there yes <laughs> so i mean all these languages have like a history they have like a background and if you learn all that stuff you know where you go into and, and you know what are you trying to learn wow inshallah. that's amazing oh that was great man that's, that's that was amazing uh <laughs> So are you planning to continue with your YouTube videos now that you have your school? Is that something you're going to drop or are you going to continue with it? So the YouTube, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm planning to continue with it. I'm, I'm thinking of ways I can uh, optimize my time so that I can uh, also, you know, upload videos on YouTube and at the same time teach the school. And I think it just comes down to like uh, delegating the work. Uh, um, and I'm going to delegate the mm -hmm. editing, the YouTube editing work to someone I'm, I'm thinking of hiring someone from somalia all the youth that we have yes. uh, so that they could just do all the editing all the work and i could just record things um you know just delegating the work and the school work uh trying to get help uh if you know the work is too much so at the end of, at the, end of the day it comes down to like uh, how much work are you willing to take and how much you're willing to delegate so uh, that's kind of things i'm looking into
that's amazing. Uh, I mean, thank you, thank you, Duran, for for your time today. That was uh, it was lovely having you, mashallah. And we, you know, may Allah put barakah in everything that you do, inshallah. Walala. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You guys are amazing. I love what you guys are doing. Uh, um, inshallah, we will we'll do more tutorials on the website. Inshallah. Uh, and hopefully we'll do more podcasts. But definitely, definitely, I enjoyed this. And I love sharing knowledge, sharing uh, information. And thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you.